Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Facebook Live, Saturday Morning Live. My name is Michelangelo Caruso, but then again, you know that. I wanted to talk today about potential because, uh, for a few, few reasons, actually. One is that we went to see the uh, Mr. Rogers movie last night, and, and Mr. Rogers was all about potential. A lot of people don't know. Hi, Alicia. Greetings from... Um, the United States. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that Mr. Rogers was an ordained minister. And uh, I, I thought that was interesting because he, he didn't, I never heard him, hey Jim, good morning. I never heard him talk about uh, scripture. He, he almost never mentions, even mentions God in his uh, TV show or when he was doing, he did commencement speeches and things like that. I didn't hear his entire body of work, but I don't think the guy ever mentioned scripture or quotes, you know, from the New Testament or anything. And um, and in the movie, the Mister Rogers movie, uh, "Would You Like to Be My Neighbor?" He uh, he talks about, uh, or actually, someone talks about him being a a person, uh, an ordained minister who actually got more preaching done on his television show than he did, uh, than anybody got done in church. You know, he became like America's pastor in a way, or the children's pastor, even though he never talked about God. Because he was always about potential. And there was a link in the, in the uh, movie about, a uh, mention in the movie about how a lot of people vilified Mr. Rogers because he's allegedly the one who started this whole um, thing with the millennials, that, that millennials all think that they're great and they're all um, special <laughs> because that was Mr. Rogers' thing. You are special, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and so people were, there were things in the movie about him being pro, the protests and stuff like this, uh, and people vilifying him for having that approach. But he was really all about potential. He was about telling people that they were special. And by the way, he defended himself against that that charge that he's the person to blame because an entire generation thinks that they're special and, and should get an award for 14th place. What uh, he said in a commencement speech, he said, all I'm saying is that, that, you don't ha that you, as an individual, you don't have to do anything spectacular for someone to love you. Uh, you know, and, and who could argue with that? N nobody could ever say that's wrong. But I think people are always looking for, you know, an enemy or somebody, somebody to hate. And, and Mr. Rogers was never out of the crosshairs like anybody else. Morning, David. Where are you from, David? Type it into the comments, David. Where are you today? How's, how are you feeling? So I wanted to talk today about potential, partly because Rogers is in my head. It's in my hair. I got a lot of stuff in my head today. <laughs> <laughs> so this idea of potential and um, another little sidebar here on the way to the actual topic is, um, you know, when you got a, a newspaper and you opened up a newspaper in the morning, you, you first had to unfold it, right? So there was this, all this stuff that was above the fold and all the stuff that was below the fold. And if you open up the newspaper again, hey, Mount Pleasant, great. Uh, did we meet when I spoke to the, uh, the city of Mount Pleasant, all the employees maybe? about a year ago, two years ago, he had like an all staff meeting, that might have been you guys. And my brother went to school at Central, by the way, go Chips. So uh, when you open up a newspaper, what I have had the long habit of doing is reading the paper like this. I'll read a story that's up in this corner of the paper and then one down here that is allegedly unrelated, uh, but it must be related because it's being reported in the same day. They are connected. And by the way, I worked, uh, in the newspaper business for a while, doing page layout, and I was the editor of the Michigan Journal at the University of Michigan Dearborn, so I'm, I'm not unaware. Hey, Novi, okay, that's how we know each other. You live in Mount, oh, you're just in Mount Pleasant today, and you belong to Novi Rotary, perhaps that's what's happening. Welcome, David. So, what happens is, a person reading the newspaper doesn't think that those stories are connected, but of course they're connected because they're happening on the same day and because the editor of the paper or the person doing the page layout had a chance to put this both articles on page 7 or one on page 7 and one on page 12 and they chose to put them both on page 7 for flow and stuff, right? 
or the mix of the, the, the media, the, the story mix on that particular spread. And so um, when things are happening in my life, like I go to see the Mr. Rogers movie last night, and I'm sending out an email to my list uh, suggesting that if you're stuck, I will help you. This potential thing connects in my brain and I get a little spark, you know, and I get an idea. And then I go, Gee, I wonder if those two ideas are related. I wonder if I have a, some enough content here for a Facebook Live post. And I wonder if people would be interested in it. And fortunately, I'm right a lot of the times so, that, you know, if I see a connection and it's intriguing to me, a lot of times other people find it interesting. And, and so that's how I generate content. So this idea of potential is interesting because I've just started a new marketing initiative where I'm taking calls. I'm at a station in my life where I, I, I want to help people. I've always wanted to help people. I'm a lifelong Rotarian. David probably knows that. So I've always liked to help people. In fact, uh, Alicia on the call is a Rotarian in Great Britain. Jim Gilmore is a Rotarian here in my district, my Rotary district. So they understand the mentality of giving back. And for me, it's been lifetime. I joke that a lot of Rotarians count how many years they've been in Rotary, but I got tired of keeping track for myself. It seems like it changed every 12 months. So now I just say I'm a lifetime Rotarian, but it's been 22, 23 years. I'll probably be a Rotarian the rest of my life. It's you know, a great decision for me. So as I think about giving back, I thought, well, if I like giving back so much and I happen to teach presentation skills, I wonder if there are ways that I could give back to people and do sessions for people um, and not ask for anything from them, you know, just, hey, Matt, what, uh, greetings, I think you're in Illinois today, yeah? And, um, and, and, and do this, Matt's in a chamber, by the way, he runs a great chamber in uh, Illinois, and, and I give back to chambers all the time because chambers do such great work for the community. They connect the community to uh, business people and, and government, right? And so I thought, well, how can I give back to people who are in need, people who are hurting. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm still a businessman. I still uh, have uh, toys I wanna buy. I still wanna go on nice trips. And so I still, hey Vicky, uh, greetings. Vicky's an old friend from Trenton High School. Boy, we haven't chatted in forever. It's good to see you. And, and I thought, well, I, if I can give back to people who are in pain, people who are really hurting, people who give presentations for a living, who could be at a much higher station in life if their presentations would, were better. Is there a way that I can help them and not go bankrupt? You know, what, what is the, you know, it's like a little tipping point there. You, you, you can do some free work, some free work. How much free work can you do? And then, then you stop making money. And if you do all, if you, if you never help people, you feel like this all the time, you know, my life's out of balance, right? So I'm trying to figure out, and I do this from time to time, maybe you do too, well, what's the balance there for helping people? And I came upon a system for doing free calls now during the week with people free, and, and they, they're, they're blown away um, that they're free because they're, they're hefty calls, you know, 45 minutes or an hour. And what's interesting to me about them is we really get to the truth about what's holding people back, about their potential. Now, keep in mind the framework here. We're talking to people who uh, are... Uh, giving presentations as an important part of their job description. Now, they could be salespeople because salespeople have to go give presentations in order to make a sale. They could be leaders who are in charge of a, a group of people, right? And they're not getting, quote, paid to make presentations, but the presentations they make to the team is what deputizes the team, keeps up their morale, uh, helps the team feel that they can do what they need to do. So the presentations are very important for team leaders. They could, uh, I could be talking about people who are writing a book and about to go on a book tour. The book won't sell if you can't do a good interview. So I, I, I could help that person do better interviews. But when I talk about people are, that are hurting, is it like a, there's, like, there's like a, I don't know, a, a gradation in the people that are hurting, the people that are living beneath their potential. And I know this because there have been times in my life where I live beneath my potential. I'm not being all that I can be. I don't mean to be corny here, but this idea of not being the, the, the person that you can be. Um, and, and why does this happen? Well, one reason it happens is because 
we don't think it's possible, right? Um, we don't think it's possible to ever become fit, to ever lose weight, to ever run a marathon. So we give up on it. We don't think it's possible to make six figures. We don't think it's possible, hey Jared, how are you? We don't think it's possible to earn six figures a year. We don't think it's possible to net six figures a year. We don't think it's possible to live in um, Florida or to have a second home in Florida, right? We've always dreamt of doing it, but we've stopped wanting to do it or stopped thinking that it's possible. Hey, Steve, hi, Bonnie. Because our potential meter, our potential filter has been all messed up by all kinds of things, right? Like um, old scripts with mom and dad, <laughs> daddy issues, mommy issues. Um, uh, we've been at a job for 10 years that have, has conditioned us to lose hope. You know, um, we become so grateful, and I, I'll put this in quotes, right? Grateful for the job that we have, that we're too afraid to leave the job. The risk, the, the risk and the discomfort and the pain of leaving that job. Good to see you, Steve. Thanks for being on today. Where are you from, Steve? Type it into the, remind me, type it into the box. Um, we're so afraid of moving on uh, of what could happen that even though the dream awaits us, we won't make the change because the, that gap between where we are and where we want to be, we perceive that gap to be so uh, unachievable, you know? And it's because we've lost hope. It's because we don't think it's possible. I've given up. It's because, oh, I think it's possible, but it's too inconvenient. It would be too painful. That's another reason we don't do it. Hey, Virginia, all right. You guys got the best state motto, man. Isn't Virginia for lovers? Isn't that like your state? How cool is that? Who came up with that? Like we're the Wolverine state <laughs> in Michigan or whatever. Virginia is for lovers. It's like saying only good looking people live in Virginia. Who wouldn't want that motto, right? Everybody would be moving to Virginia. It's that self-fulfilling prophecy. I'll move to Virginia, I'll become good looking. People will think I'm good looking because I'm from Virginia. Maybe that's how it happens. So, and the scariest one of all that keeps us from achieving, <laughs> keeps us from achieving our potential, very good to see you, is that we are living at our potential. And this is what I wanted to tell you because I've been getting some feedback from people where, where I actually talk to them about where they're at, right? It, this is the most insidious one of all is, I'm already living my potential. I'm already living my dream. You realize what these people are saying is they're saying, I don't have any more potential. I'm, I'm full up, man. I'm maxed. I can't live a better life. This is all there, this is it. That's, you know. And I think to myself, oh my gosh, that's like the biggest illusion of all. Of course there's more, of course. But, but because we don't think it's possible or because we don't see it or because we're tired or because we live with people who limit our beliefs, we live with people who limit our self-beliefs. We've all been there. I'm not there right now. I haven't been there in a while. But it changes how we feel about ourselves. And I know this because just this week I was on some of these free calls to help people with their presentations. And they were talking themselves out of what was possible. It was so challenging to keep them focused on the fact that I mean, after a few minutes, I, I, I said to one person, I said, it sounds like I might believe in you more than you believe in you. And that was greeted by silence. I mean, he came around later. But we all tell ourselves stories, you know. We all start to believe things are a certain way. Hi, Loretta, how are you? We all start to believe things are a certain way because they've been that way for so long or because somebody tells us that's how it is or we we're conditioned to think that way. And, and what I'm here to tell you today is Everybody has more in, in them. Everybody has more. You have a greater capacity to love than you think you have. You have more time than you think you have. Good morning, Loretta. The famous example, I heard this recently from, actually from the people that are, I'm in this program, people are kind of showing me a new way, how to do things. And they said, 
they said that they hear a lot from people who want to get into shape physically and, and the excuse, the first excuse they almost always hear from them is, I don't have time, which is technically true, you know, because they get up in the morning, they do their, all their stuff, right? <laughs> do all their stuff and then they go to bed at night and that whole day is filled up with stuff. So technically speaking, they are correct. They don't have time to get in shape because it takes time to walk fast, run, lift weights, all those things that you have to do to get in shape. It takes time. It takes, an, it takes 20 minutes to drive to the gym, an hour to stay at the gym, 20 minutes to go home. If your day is completely filled up with stuff, you are technically correct, you don't have time, and you're living beneath your potential. So that's called, psychologists call it, cognitive dissonance. Got those two things in your head. Wait a second, I have the potential to live my life up here in terms of how much money I make, how healthy I am, how good I am at giving presentations and getting people to place an order with me or go do what I tell them to do. I have the potential to do that, but I don't have time to get better because my day's already filled with other stuff. And then you, when you get into the nap of the fabric, it would this living to your potential would require not doing things that you're really used to doing, you know, down here. You'd have to replace some of those activities with stuff that would help you live to your potential because this stuff has you living at this level, right? And we all go through this. So in order to move to that level, you had to have to give something up that you already do. This is a very valuable lesson. Someone, a wise man once said, probably a woman, said that in order to have good things come into your life, you have to let go of something else. When I was young, I thought, I thought, F that, man. <laughs> I'm keeping both of them. I, I don't have to let anything go. I just keep, I'm just going to have everything. I don't have to let this go for this to come into my life. What are you, nuts? I'm strong. I'm 22. But the older I get, the more I see the wisdom in that statement that, that it's true. And it's certainly true in a, in a physical timeline of the day when your entire day's got a routine to it. You know, if your routine does not involve going to the gym, you have to let go of one section of your routine in order to go to the gym. And you, and you wouldn't be able to do it for one day and have any kind of potential, right? Rise to any kind of potential. And you couldn't just do it for a week. This is not a project. This is a lifetime commitment now to fitness or a lifetime commitment to service or a lifetime commitment to uh, refining your presentation skills, right? can't just do it for a day or a week. You have to like immerse yourself in it. And this is me in my brain connecting Mr. Rogers in the, in the movie and the message of potential to helping people become better at giving presentations. Hey, Peter, good morning. I mean, this is fascinating to me. And, and here's my favorite part is that when, when I talk about presentation skills, or when I, the offer is I will help you with your presentation skills, because if I said I'll help you with your self-esteem, nobody would ever do a call with me, not even a free one, because everybody thinks they have enough self-esteem. Everybody thinks they're already okay with self-concept. But here's what I've discovered, is it's, self, the, it's that lack of self-esteem that's the root of all of this. Why else would anybody live, purposely live beneath their potential unless they had something less than complete self-esteem, complete full concept, you know, full self-concept. I mean, to me, that's fascinating. If you have answers to these questions, type them in. Hey, Stephen, how are you? If you, have, if you have thoughts about this, I'm interested. Type them in and type fast. Don't wait because uh, there's a little delay here between when I see your post and when you type it. Hi, Julia. But that, that's an interesting question. And think about your own life. I mean, you don't have to implicate yourself. We're all friends here. This call is being recorded. <laughs> but if, if you're living beneath your potential, and you know you're living beneath your potential, why on earth would you purposely do that unless you didn't think enough of yourself, unless you didn't think you were worthy, unless you didn't think... You had self-doubt about being able to achieve it. Good morning, Richard. That's a fascinating question to me. And we all run into it, you know. I'm going through it right now because I've got a chance to, to really make a, uh, a jump a big chasm in my career. 
right? You know, we say about everybody that gets to be our age, you know, that you know, come into your peak earning years or your peak influence with people. You know, I've been building my list for so long now and I've got, good morning, Valentina. I've got so many connections now. This is my big moment, right? What Cecil B. DeMille say, time for your close up, you know? So if that's true for me and I've got a chance to jump into this big chasm, you can hear me, I mean, like I'm in therapy right now talking to you. And I know I have more potential. What would keep me from doing that other than my own lack of confidence or my own lack of potential? My own short, my own, my own awareness of my shortcomings. And so these people that get on the free call with me, it's, it's uh, an hour. I'll give you the link here in a minute. If you are interested in uh, improving your presentation skills, for those of you just joining, it's a free call. This is the whole premise of my Facebook Live this morning. It's a free call so that you can, because you're hurting, right? You're living beneath your potential. You, if you're in sales and, you, and, you, and your commission check decides whether your kids go to private school, and your kids are in public school and they're getting treated, and I'm not making a statement about schools here, but they're in a school they don't belong in. They're getting picked on, bullied in school. You gotta get them away from those kids, get them to a, a better um, platform for education. Good morning, Jay. But you can't because you're present, because you're not doing well enough at work. And you're, you're living here at work, here's your commission check, and it could be up here if you only had better presentation skills. And a guy who knows how to do it is offering you a free call, to a breakthrough call to get you going. And you don't, A, you don't want to be on the call. Or B, and this is, this is the part I want to talk to you about today. When you get on the call, you're under the remarkable delusion that if this guy gives you a couple of tips <laughs> about how to improve your presentation, that your commission checks will skyrocket. That's what everybody wants from me. They want tips. Tell me what to say. I have trouble at the beginning of my presentations. Can you tell me what to say? I have trouble asking for the order. Can you tell me what to say? Can you help me get more people into my presentation? The answer to all those questions I, is yes, I can help you with all that stuff. But let's take one of them. Can you help me get more people into my presentations? Because I need to speak to more people. And I think the very first thing I think to myself, of course the answer is yes, but, the, but I think to myself, what if your, your presentation's crappy? I mean, you already, by your own admittance, because you have to fill out a little form to get on the call, because I want to know something about you, right? I'm not sleepwalking through this. I really want to help you. So I get you to answer a couple of key questions. And if in the form you say, yeah, my potential is up here, but I'm, I'm doing, I'm performing at this level. You see, what I'm, see where I'm going with this? You, you admit this to me in the form. And then you say, if I could just have more people in the presentations I'm already doing, this is the presentation you're already doing, if I could have more people in the, in the presentation I'm already doing, I could improve my closing ratio. And it doesn't pencil out people. Because if the presentation you're doing is not good, if it's mediocre, getting more people into the mediocre presentation doesn't solve your problem. It certainly won't help you get to your potential. But this is how we think. I don't know if it's an American thing or if it's an instant gratification thing. Maybe some of you know more about this than I do. But if somebody thinks that by just getting a tip that it will change their income, I don't know. I think it's almost delusional. That's not how I got good at giving presentations. By, I mean, I did amass a lot of tips and I had to put, some, I had to put a lot of those tips into action Right? It is a recipe for success. But it's usually not one little thing. Like if you ever talk about somebody about how somebody you're at a cocktail party last night, right? And somebody says, I lost uh, 30 pounds. And the first thing you go and say, might say is hot congratulations. Quickly followed by how did you do it? And the answer is never really worth it, is it? You ever hear somebody they go, Well, I just ate, I just started I just started eating less. And you're like, Yeah? <laughs> and what else? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was like never enough. Or they started saying, well, I, I started going to the gym. And you go, and? Like that couldn't possibly be the whole answer. And guess what? It's not. What did they do when they were at the gym? 
But if you ever listen to those uh, conversations at cocktail parties, nobody ever has any follow-up questions. You better hope you never run into me at the cocktail party because I've got questions for you. I'm going to know. I want to know how long you go to the gym. How many days a week do you go? What exactly did you do while you were there? And don't just tell me about the gym. What about the food you're eating? What's your normal diet like? Did you change it at all? What other kinds of awareness did you have? Man, I do it. I, I want to know. Because I know it's not one tip that made you achieve or helped you achieve your potential. And it's certainly not that way in the speaking business. So, hi Heather, good morning. Hi Ryan. Heather, you in your new house yet? I can't tell sometimes from the pictures of whether or not you've actually moved in. Congratulations. And so, uh, I'm on these calls and sometimes I get in a tussle with people because um, it is a free call, which already blows their mind. You know, like, you're sure you're not charging, you don't want anything for this? I say, absolutely no obligation. No, I just wanted to help. I, if I can help you get a breakthrough, I want to do that. Am I available to you if you want to work together? For sure, but there's no obligation to the call. There, I don't charge you anything. Right, you don't owe me anything. Hey, Violet. Violet as an Aunt Violet? How cool is that? If you're just joining us today, we're talking about potential and the fact that most people live beneath their potential. If you'd like to see the complete video, you can look into my timeline a little bit later today and you'll see, you'll see the complete video. But the, all the psychology that's involved when someone lives beneath their full potential, how does that happen, you know? Oh, and then another thing, we think, well, if, if I didn't achieve my full potential at age 26, you know, if I'm not up here by age 26 or 36, then it's too late for me, right? And that's, of course, bullshit. Hmm. You hear the joke, the funny joke about the lady, the 80-year-old the lady that everybody comes to her birthday party and she says, um, well, what are you, you going to do with the rest of your life, so-and-so? She's 80. And she says, well... Um, I was thinking about getting uh, finishing my bachelor's degree. And uh, everybody that's eating the birthday cake drops their fork, you know, and everybody, all this heads spin around. It's like E.F. Hutton. She said, you said what? And, um, and there's a, a couple people smiling, and then one person says, what are you kidding? You're 80. Or, well, what are you kidding? You can hardly get out of the house because you, you can't move that well. Or another one said, uh, where are you going to get the money for that? Right, all these naysayers, like, almost like, you know, harping at her, you know, and, and good-naturedly, but nonetheless, you know, are you kidding me? Your po that potential's way up here. You're, you're here. You're 80. And her famous line, or one of them actually says to her, because um, she, she tells about how many credits she needs, and, and she says, and somebody does the math and says, well, hey, Dave, good morning. Dave Sanderson, everybody, has a fabulous book. It's called um, Moments Matter. Dave uh, Sanderson was the last passenger off of the flight that did the water ditch into the Hudson River a few years ago. He, I had the great fortune of uh, speaking with him at, at an event, and then we did a podcast together. He's a terrific human being. He's got a great message about, about seizing the moment, right? Making moments matter. Kind of like what we're talking about today. Is if, if you're living beneath your potential, at what point would you actually do something about it, you know? If you're not providing for your family, if you're not being, if you're not as happy as you could be, at what point would you actually do something about it, even though it would be painful for you, painful financially, painful to change your schedule? You'd have to step into your uncomfortable zone, right? So finish my story about the old lady. So the uh, she's 80, right? She's had a birthday, and, and, and everybody's telling her, "Well, you, you can't go back for your bachelor's degree," and somebody pencils it out and says, are you kidding? By the time you finish your bachelor's degree, going back, you know, part-time, taking one class a semester, you'll be 83 years old. 83. And the argument was, don't do it, you know. You'd be wasting all that time. And you might know by now, it's a famous joke. She says, she says, well, if I don't go back and finish my bachelor's degree in three years, I'll still be 83. And everybody just shuts up, you know, and says, go for it. Because she had that, she had that awareness that she didn't care if she was 80. She didn't care if it took three years. She didn't care if people looked at her sideways because it seemed like an unreasonable goal. She knew she was living beneath her potential. She wanted to finish this up. And I was on one of these free calls. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you like that story. Uh, so um, I was on a call today, or yesterday, this week with a guy who was 76. 
And I was reminded of that story because, and I don't think David would mind you tell, me telling you this story. He's a gifted uh, composer, classical music composer. But, but I think he might have given up, you know. He, he's never really been a chi uh, uh, respected and recognized for all of the things that he's done in his lifetime of work now, lifetime of work. And now I'm on the call, and because I'm honest with people, I'm, hey, Jim, good morning. Hey, Anthony, welcome. And because I'm on the call with him, and I'm honest, I have to tell him. I have to tell a 76-year-old guy that he's living beneath his potential. How do you think that went over? I got him to tell me. Because I said, how do you feel at this stage in your career? You know, how many CDs did you sell last year? And I don't have to tell you the answers. I'll let him tell you some other time. But the answer was low. And how many, how many, how many dollars in royalties did you get? And how many times were, were your works performed, you know, in the United States? And he said, yeah, these are low numbers, I guess, eh? <laughs> I'm not just I'm not saying anything, right? But that's what, so Freud... Freud, and uh, people talk smack about Freud these days, but Freud called this self-talk because you didn't really need somebody else to tell you, right? And I am aware of that. If I'm on the call with you and I'm asking good questions, you don't need me to tell you what's going on. You'll just tell yourself. So I'm like, I'll ask a question. Well, how do you think you did last year? <laughs> how many CDs did you, do you think you should be selling right now? <laughs> and, and his answers are getting you know, further apart and softer because he's losing enthusiasm because he's, he's coming into this pain point of awareness about, about that gap, you know. He knows it's there, but now he's talking with somebody about it. And his wife won't talk with him about this, I'm guessing, because she's been living with it too. She just thinks, well, that's how he is. That's where he, that's where he is. That's his station in life. You know, in some ways, she's given up on him, maybe. In the same way that he's... And I'm not saying she's a bad person. She's given up on him in the same way he's given up on himself. And when I say himself, I'm talking about some of you. I'm talking about me. We give up on ourselves. And it's a pity. Because on any day that you're not the best person you can be, the world is a lesser place. And so I've been fascinated. Good morning, Marion. I've been fascinated by that gap and potential. And I'm, I spent a lot of time on this in my own life, but because I am trying to make connections for people and because I saw the Mr. Rogers movie last night, I thought I'd bring it to your attention today that we all have that potential to be special, really special, like capital S special, not small s, capital S. And you should never, ever, ever give up on yourself. In fact, growth for you, growth is in that uncomfortable zone. Unless you're uncomfortable, you're not growing. And so how do we live our lives? We, we start to come into this zone where we want to be comfortable. That's why we work so hard to be, you know, get through our teens, very uncomfortable. 20s, getting started in life, getting through school. 30s, having kids, figuring out the family thing. All can be very uncomfortable. And then we finally get to a place, maybe in our 40s or 50s. There's, I know there's some retirees on the call today. We get to that place where we're finally comfortable, man. And it's down here. <laughs> it's down here, way beneath our potential. And we don't talk about it with other people. It just kind of eats at us, you know. Yeah, I'm less, I'm less than I could be. Yeah, I wish I would have done that. And that's when the regret starts to creep in, and that's when you... I think maybe that's why old people get cranky, right? I could have, I could have been a contender. I could have been somebody instead of a bum. <laughs> I can't remember. Is that what he said? Instead of a bum, which is what I am. Marlon Brando, speak our name, desire. Hey, Loretta. Loretta says, when you walk into a room and you are the most intelligent and creative, leave. That's exactly right. But I know a lot of people who like to be the smartest person in the room. And they, you know, they like to talk. Yeah, we were at, uh, we went to uh, get a hamburger at a cafe here in Royal Oak before the Mr. Rogers movie last night. And there was a table next to us. And there were four people at the table. 
And I wasn't really, I mean, I saw them come in, but I wasn't really paying attention to them. I wasn't hyper aware of them until one of them kind of disclosed herself, right? She became the loudest person at the table, clearly the most knowledgeable <laughs> person at the table. She was running the table. You know how they say in pool, when you run the table, you, you know, you're the only one shooting, right? Of course, when you run the table in pool, you're actually talented. But she's running the table last night, and I, I don't know if she's talented or not, but it seemed like a very lopsided conversation. So I don't ever want to be that guy where I'm the only one talking or I'm the loudest person in the room or um, Loretta makes a great point. If, if, you're not this, if you are the smartest person in the room, it's probably time to get to another room. And when I was a kid, people always said, always play chess with people who are better than you. You get your ass kicked all the time, right? But, but you're learning. If you always play people that you can beat, you're never learning. You, you learn, might be learning some stuff, but you're not learning what you could learn when you're playing people that you can beat in chess. And the metaphor stretches all the way out. I told you I would share the link with you because all you're on my Facebook buddies. This is, a, again, if you're just joining the call, it's an opportunity for a free call with me. You have to pass a little test before you get on the call, right? Uh, and that's a little uh, form I ask you to fill out where you answer some questions that even the people that love you don't ask you anymore because they, they, they already used to you the way you are, right? I'm not. I'm not used to you living beneath your potential and I will never give up on you. So my questions are about your potential and what you would do with the hour after we're, we're off the phone. It's called a breakthrough call because I want you to do something with the information. You know, it's a free call, but that doesn't mean I'm wasting my time, right? If I'm investing an hour with you, I want you to collect on that investment. And so I ask you to answer some questions. Not everybody gets on the call for a couple of reasons. One is I, I can only do this so many uh, hours a week because it's pro bono. But the other thing is I, I want to talk to people that are interested in themselves, that are truly interested in addressing that gap. Specifically people who can help other people by giving better presentations or earn a higher commission check and bring more money home to their kids, their family, because they're better at presenting, right? Uh, I'm interested in talking with leaders who have lost control of their teams because they're so, they're, they're so, uh, can we be honest, inept at giving presentations. The team doesn't like them anymore. Someone else on the team is running the team. I'll help you. And the link to that, if you wanted to check it out, is just my website. It's michaelangelocaruso.com forward slash apply, A-P-P-L-Y. And I'll help you with your presentation. But be advised, it's not presentation tips that I'm going to give you. It's, it's going to be getting to the truth or the heart of the matter. What is, in medicine, they call it the uh, Occam's razor. You know, what is the simplest, most elegant explanation for why you're beneath your potential? And, the, and that reason is not because you don't have a tip from me or you don't have a tip from somebody, uh, you know, another expert. That's not why there's a gap like this, right? Hey, Jim, good morning. Thanks for all you do, too. So, uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you. If, you. if you think that someone else needs to hear this message, feel free to share the link with them. A lot of people don't know this, but if you click the timestamp in the video after it posts to Facebook, if you click the timestamp, it'll say, uh, depending on when you read, see it, just now, or it'll say uh, four hours ago, or two days ago, if you click that timestamp, it'll generate a unique URL, a permalink, it's called, up above, and it'll, and it'll actually, because every post on Facebook has its own private identification number, um, and, and if you just copy that link to your pal, you know, they can view it on Facebook. It's pretty cool. Otherwise, you have to send them to my page, and then they have to scroll down and see it. A lot of people don't know how to do this. You can send them the exact link to the video by clicking the timestamp in the video. It's true for any post on Facebook. That tip alone may have made your morning. <laughs> so um, if you're interested in the free call, or better yet, you know somebody that's interested in the free call about how to improve your presentations, and I'm not talking about free tips, I'm talking about massive. I'm talking about quantum leap in the quality of your presentations. I'm talking about the stuff that gets you promoted, the stuff that keeps the doors of your company open, the stuff that allows you to improve and increase market share, which allows you to help 
hundreds if not thousands of more people because you're able to convey your value to people that much better than I'm interested in talking with you. I've also started a Present Like a Pro Facebook group. And if you just go, uh, search in, in Facebook, Present Like a Pro, probably will come up right away. Present Like a Pro Michelangelo Caruso, it'll come up and you can join the group. That's also free. And in that post, we talk a lot about mindset. In that page, we talk a lot about mindset and potential and what keeps people from being able to jump that chasm. Because that's really the first step, right? Anybody can take a tip. Anybody can act on a tip, but that's not really what makes you better. You understand that, right? Give me a give me a thumbs up or a like if you like if you I appreciate what I just said. Anybody can use a tip, but a tip doesn't help you achieve your full potential. Absolutely doesn't happen. Hey, good morning, Rick. And it's not just true for my line of work. Thank you. Presentations. It's true for anything. It's, you say you want to become independently wealthy. One tip is not going to do it, people. You want to lose 30 pounds. One tip is not going to get you there. It's not about that. It's not about instant gratification. It's about mindset and commitment and resourcefulness, right? And resilience. All of that psychology. And it's all in your head. And then anything's possible. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, we're going to go out and have a fantastic Saturday. It's beautiful weather here in Michigan. I hope it's great where you are too. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Rick. If you have comments or feedback, feel free to type it in. As I mentioned, there's a little bit of a lag. I'll check the thread a little bit later and see if I can answer. I'll also point, uh, post links. Good morning, Elena, from Chicago land, I imagine. And Peter, um, I will post links uh, in the bottom and more um, encouragement in the, in the comment section. So thanks, everybody, for being aboard, and uh, we'll see you later. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.